mic's probably not working. Whatever. What's going on, guys? Cody from Motorcycle MD. And today, I'll be bringing you guys a video on how to adjust, clean, and check over a point system on an older style bike. This is a 75 CB750, and it will be our test subject for the night. So be sure to hang around through the video. I'll be showing you guys some quick and awesome tips throughout this thing. And I hope you guys can watch this and have something to chew on when you go to work on your own bike. Let's get started. Now, as usual, there's always some tools that you need to get the job started. The cool thing is that on these older systems, people would usually find whatever they could in a time of need to get these things together. And these systems are so old, I'm sure there are tons of different ways that you can skin this cat. And I'm sure that someone's gonna disagree with the way that I do my points. But I don't really care, because that's how I do them, and it, regardless, it gets the job done. It gets them timed in and gets the gap set correctly. So, before you get the thumbs down, just remember, there's not just one way to do this. There's multiple different ways to do this. This is just how I will be achieving the task. There are two different ways that you can actually check the points. There's a old static style, which we meet, which is just a light bulb and two wires. You can hook it all up. I'm not gonna go over that because that's not what I do. I use a timing light, old school Sears Craftsman timing light, and it still works and it's heavy. It's like freaking a five pound timing light, but it works great. I also use an external battery, not on the bike, to help power this thing. And this thing also has a clamp. Okay, what this is used for is to clamp around the spark plug wire. The spark plug wire will sit right inside of there. It makes a complete connection around it, and it will read that pulse or that signal running through the spark plug wire. Now, these, these typically work best when, the, when you're in front of the heat shield for the spark plug wire. Sometimes I've found that when I use these and I go on the heat shield of the spark plug, whichever cylinder I'm doing it on, it won't pick it up or it'll be a little bit sporadic. So you really want to get down close to the wire of the spark plug coil. But yeah, that's what I'll be using. Timing light works great. I feel like it's most accurate. Um, again, someone's going to disagree with me. I don't care. I'll still get it in right. Now some other tools I'll be using, which of course is going against the grain of what a lot of people will say. I use some very fine wet dry sandpaper. Okay, it's very, very fine stuff. Um, this is what I, this is like my, my final step to cleaning points, okay? I also have some different files. This one's a little bit uh, heavier grit, and this one's a little bit finer grit. It is a file, and um, I wouldn't consider it a point file, but it's my points file. And paper towel to help clean the points up when you, once you're done cleaning them. Contact cleaner, break contact cleaner, I don't really care as long as it's not oil based. Tried and true, what you should always own if you have an old bike is some type of manual impact driver, okay? There's two different kinds that I have. I have this kind, which is a little bit more heavy duty, but I also have this awesome little tool here. And I learned about this tool from a guy, a viewer of the channel, uh, Zippo Varga. He, he has a pretty interesting channel on uh, small motors and power equipment and stuff like that. Really nice guy. He put me on this tool here, and it's called a Vessel Impacta. I've kind of worn it away, but it's a really awesome tool because of three things. Magnetic tip, JIS style tip as well, Japanese industrial standard, which works great for, with Phillips heads with these metric bikes. When you hit it, it works like an impact driver. And what that does is as you impact this side, inside is a little cam and it turns it 12 degrees and it loosens that nut just a slight, slight degree, but it's, it's typically just enough to get the the Phillips heads loose and y'all will know if you have an old 750 or any type of old bike they love Phillips head screws okay and usually they're just so tight on there that you're gonna strip them out trying to get them off so those type of tools are super helpful and again this impact driver I don't care which one I'll, I'll put links down in the description below I don't care which one you get and this one's a little bit more um, handy because you can use it as a regular Phillips head all day long it works great um, but something kind of heavy duty like this is great to have if you own a bike. Now, as we dive into it, I will be sure to show you guys more in-depth information about what I'm actually talking about. Cleaning the points. What does that even mean? Setting point gap. What does that mean? Adjustments. There's three different adjustments that you can make on these. Um, again, the manual probably tells you to go in a certain order. 
I typically don't stand by that order and I go in the order that I want because regardless, I'm gonna get to where I want it to be anyways. And it'll still be in spec. I don't care what you say. So we get to the points by removing the point cover. On a 750, it's right here behind this chrome cap. I've already loosened them up, but I'm gonna go ahead and take this off and then I'll change the angle of the camera so you guys can see it better. And the reason why I am diving into this is because uh, this is actually a good buddy of mine. Uh, he's had me do a bunch of work on, on, on his bikes. Awesome guy. It's just not running as well as it should. I mean, yes, he's got pod filters, shorty pipes, this, that, and the other. And there could be other issues with the carbs or something like that, but this is what I'm gonna check first. I always check this stuff out first before I dive into anything fuel related. But it's chopping up, running out, um, runs like junk over a certain RPM. So there's a couple different things that I wanna check, but first, I'm gonna check here. And when I checked here, I actually noticed a problem that I want to adjust. So that's why I decided to make the video. All right, so we'll bring this shot in real close so I can kind of point some stuff out. All right, so there's a lot of stuff going on here. I'm gonna to try to get to it the best as I can to help you guys realize what's going on. So this is your, whoa. This is your point plate, okay? The plate that has everything on it. I mean, it's got different adjusters on this side. You got a small adjuster here. The whole plate itself can rotate. That's why, there's, that's why everything is slotted. Um, all these little bubbles that you see, they're all helpful for leverage points to adjust certain things. You got your points here, okay? You got point for cylinder one and four, it even says right there on the plate. It's point for system for cylinder two and three. Two different sides going on here, okay? You also have your condensers. Okay, I'm not gonna get super scientific about it, but the condenser's job is to make sure that when the contact points are separated, that spark cannot continue to arc through that gap, okay? thus getting into point gap. Point gap is the gapping between this anchor point and this point inside of there. So the points are these two little points that are touching each other, okay? And we'll get into point gap a little bit more. It's more to it than that. But condenser's job is to make sure that once this is separated, it's a clean break of spark and doesn't continue to try to jump. Side note, when condensers begin to start to go bad, you'll notice a very sporadic spark jumping from the points. It's not a very clean break when those points come apart. Okay, so you'll notice bright, bright white or blue sparks kind of firing off from here. You shouldn't see that going on. Even though you may, every now and then it'll get a, a tiny little jump or something like that, but I'm talking about consistent bad lightning bolts coming out of your point system. Okay, now right in the center here, this is connected directly to the crankshaft, okay? So the crankshaft's running all the way through to the other side. On this end of the crankshaft, this, this portion of the crankshaft, there's actually a cam lobe, okay? A cam lobe is simply something that looks kind of like this, okay? As it rotates, the lobe of the cam is making things move, okay? Same thing operating on your camshaft up top, same style or fundamental purpose of that cam lobe here. So as this rotates, you'll see that this will actually open and close these points. So as I turn this motor through clockwise, you might not be able to see it. Let's see if we can see it, get it in the shot. Cam's gonna work its way around. There it is right there. So now this point is now open. Okay, it's at its furthest point right there. So where this part of the arm rides on the cam lobe right here, it's fully open. That is as far as that point gap will go. And that, my friend, is your point gap check right there. So as you turn this through, you're gonna open this point up. When you see it start to open up, you're gonna keep going until it reaches its furthest gap. And that's where your point gap is checked. So, via the manual, typical point gaps usually are about 0.3 to 0.4 millimeters of space. So the feeler gauge, it's my point gap feeler gauge. It's 0.3. So what I'll do is I'll just take my feeler gauge and kind of ride it inside of here. And this is actually a lot looser than I, what I'd like it to be. I, I can actually rock this feeler gauge back and forth a couple times. So I, what, what you do want is just a slight resistance on it. So we'll need to adjust that. As we come back around, it will begin to open our second point for cylinder two and three and boom, starting to open right now. And as soon as that point breaks, as soon as the smallest sliver of light is seen between these two points, that's when it should be firing, the spark plug. 
So, now that you know how what you're kind of looking for, there's the most important part which is actually timing the points, because that's what's so cool about these old systems that you can actually time them yourself. So as I rotate this around, the goal is to find, right through this inspection window, two specific points. What a stupid light. That light's way too bright. So you guys might be able to see this. So right inside of here is a little machined tip looking thing. Okay, it's like a little point or a little line. All right, it's a little machined line in the case. So as I spin this around, you're gonna start seeing stuff on the plate being spun. Okay, so right now, we're gonna worry about one and four. Now we're on the advanced marks, these two little dashes on the plate that's being turned for cylinder one and four. And if I keep going forward, you're gonna see the first line, which is the most important line for this, which is a line with a F underneath it. That F, stands for fire, okay? And right past that is a T for top dead center. That T is telling you that that, that piston for one and four are all the way at the top of the stroke. T, top dead center, that's what you need to know. So that's really just trying to help you guys understand what's going on and what you're kind of looking for. And it can get very confusing, but I hope this video, you can rewind it, fast forward it, whatever you want to do to get to the meat. Um, of what you need to do, but that's pretty much the basics of it, okay? So the very first thing that I would do is check the surfaces of those points before I start going after stuff, because I'm gonna clean them all up first, and then we'll start adjusting them. So let's go ahead and do that now. There's a bunch of different variations of how the points can wear, and I wanna make sure that they're wearing clean, and that there's no pitting, there's no uh, debris on top of them that, that can kind of build up, and they're not powdery, whitish, and all that kind of stuff. So what I do, you just simply pull the points open, okay? And then you can actually visually look and down on that point. I'll try to take some pictures for you guys so you guys can get an actual better shot. But then, based off of how they look, if there's a big old pit on top like you see in that picture, same with this one, you see, you see a big old like little mound of stuff that builds up there, corrosion, uh, cleaning them up is what needs to be done. You wanna make that surface nice and flat on both sides, nice and clean and polished. So, in the manual they say use a, a, a very specific type of sander or stone or that stuff. Honestly, they tell you to use certain items because mainly because they don't want debris to fall down, okay? So when you use anything other than what they suggest, like a oil stone or whatever they say to use, when you use like sandpaper or gritty sandpaper or files like this, you can leave debris on the cam, um, on the contact points, or even you can actually embed that material back into the points. And that's what you don't want. So that's why the paper towel I have is to help keep that clean. So what I do is I clean with whatever tools I feel that it needs. Some are more aggressive than others. Some are just some polishing stuff. Once I'm done, I hit it with some contact cleaner to clean it up and use a paper towel to kind of wipe them clean. I'll show you guys what I mean. So first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with cylinder two and three on this side, okay? And what, what I like to do is just take something and kind of just put it right up underneath there and let it rest on top so now I have access to that point, okay? So if it was really built up like, like this one is and there, there's, there's a lot of material that you have to take away, this is what I'll use for this, some kind of very fine file. And the goal is and when you're cleaning the point, as you use the file, you want it to be even with the way that the point is designed. It's a flat surface. You don't want to go out at an angle and shave off the whole corner of a point, and then it won't be connecting properly. It'll be at a weird angle or something like that. And you want it to be as flat as possible, both contacts to touch evenly on both sides. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll work on this point first, keep my file nice and flat on top of that point, and just kind of work this back and forth. So that means getting eye level with it and really looking at it and seeing how you're doing as you pull it off. What I can see is as I'm filing it, it's hitting all sides of that circle point, but it still has that little tit right in the middle, and that's what I want to do away with. Because that debris on top will actually change when these things fire, because if it sticks up far enough, you're not making a flush contact, it will fire in a different sense and not as clean as it should be or not in the right time, maybe a little bit off, partially advanced, or partially retarded. 
And when I use retarded, it may not be the politically correct word to say, but when it comes to the points, that is the best term to use. It's a little bit behind where the point should be. Again, that may not be politically correct. I, I apologize that offends you of using that word, but that's what the terms are used in the book, and that's really the best term to use when I'm trying to describe timing. I really mean no offense whatsoever. And I don't know what your points will look like when you open them up, you know, but um, there's things you want to be looking for, like how thick this actual point is. You know, if you're getting real thin on it, it's probably time to, to replace them. Or if you're having trouble getting them timed correctly, sometimes it's because they're just too far out and replacing the point system, this whole point system, would just solve that problem. I've also ran into cases where timing was slightly off on a bike and I could not get the point timing correct because the timing was off of the actual camshaft. I'm gonna keep pressure on it here so I can file this top part down. Man, it's really hard to see at this angle. I'm gonna go ahead and switch these actually. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use a little bit more aggressive file for this top one. It's pretty messed up. It, it's definitely a lot grittier. And you notice I'm cleaning these, but I'm not closing the points. I'm not allowing any of that debris to embed itself. If I were to snap these points closed or whatever, that's, that's really the main goal. All right, so once I got the surface back to smooth again, what I'll do is I'll go, I'll, I'll go ahead and hit my paper towel with some contact cleaner, right, and I'll hit with some compressed air. And I'll take my, my, my paper towel, kind of fold it up, put it right in between those two points, and I'll, I'll just release that file. And I'll, I'll let it sit on there for a minute, and I'll kind of take some of the pressure off so I don't tear the paper towel. Just kind of wipe it across. That, that, that's all I'll do. Then what I'll do, just to make those points, because, you know, I was using that really rough file, I don't want it to be rough like that. So obviously, I'm going to smooth that out with some sandpaper. Really, really fine, wet, dry sandpaper. I'll fold it in half, okay? Put some meat up on it. Open the points. And I, I like to keep this bent edge towards the points. This makes it easier to work with. And I'll just take that, and with the pressure of the points being closed, obviously they are closed, um, I'll use that pressure to just kind of work this sandpaper back and forth. And this is kind of putting a nice little finish on those points. All right, and without dropping the points, I'll take that off. That was a little bit of contact cleaner. Then hit it with some air. Before I go any further, I want to stop this real quick because it's something that I forgot to record while we were in there. Just to the left of that file that I'm holding, you'll see a little felt with a little fork holding onto it. That is there to keep that cam lobe I've been talking about clean. Okay, what you do want to do is put a small little drop of clean oil on that to keep that whole system nice and clean oiled and revolving nicely, but didn't want to leave that out. Back to the movie. Now what you are looking for, you know, w with your points is the way that they are sitting on each other, okay? Because there's a couple different ways that they can sit. They can sit, you know, not directly down like this, but they can kind of sit off like that. They can do the other way. They can develop little mountains. They can develop gullies. They can develop, you know, almost like use, they, but I'm not gonna bore you guys more on this other side. I'm gonna go ahead and rush this through, clean all this up the exact same way, and then we'll get into timing. Sorry for the fuzz or noise you hear in the background. I got a heater going, it's got to 40 degrees today. As you can see, I, I have a little setup going on here. I'm gonna try to capture something kind of cool. I had the points all cleaned up exactly where I want them to be. I've made no adjustments whatsoever. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna run the bike, and I'm gonna grab the timing light gun, hook it up, we're going to start with cylinder number four. One and four are the same exact thing. Two and three are the same exact thing as well. So what I'm going to do is hook my timing light. Negative. Positive. My clamp will go right here on number four. Okay. See how I'm kind of as close as I can away from this heat shield here. And on that spark plug, make sure the clamp is completely closed. All right. Sometimes you got to fumble with these around a little bit to get it to read if it's not working correctly. But... Mine works pretty good. So, I'll run the bike, operating temperature, idle, okay? You're not trying to measure something that's off, our, off idle RPM quite yet. 
not until you're checking the advance marks to make sure that it is advancing. But we'll get to that. Okay, so at idle when a bike is warm is what is ideally what you want to be checking at. If your bike is not running, you're trying to set the points up. Uh, let's say you install brand new points, you're trying to just set them all up. I'll get to that here in a minute. Run the bike, and then I'm going to switch to my other camera, my phone, and go into a slow mo and see if we can't pick up the light firing when it should. All right, let's hope this works. All right, let's start this thing up. Well, that didn't work. All right, so the slow-mo was a complete fail. It's like too slow or something. I don't know. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna record me using the timing light with cylinder one and four. I'm not gonna try to talk during it, but I'm just gonna go through one and four first. I'm gonna switch the clamp over to cylinder three and fire two and three, and maybe it will pick it up, maybe it won't. What I'm looking for is for the timing light, it will flash when it sees, when it picks up the spark signal from the coil. So once it gets the spark signal, it transfers it into a light and then flashes exactly when it's firing. And what you want is that light to be flashing on the F. I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of a trick when it comes to that. Um, there's a certain place that I like to set it up, which is just a hair past the F mark. I think they run a little bit better like that. But that's just from my own experience of, of tuning these things in. Plus, uh, you know, some old heads have taught me that way as well. So I trust it. But I'm going to turn this up and we'll see where 1 and 4 is at. I already know that it's right on the F. I'm going to see if it'll pick it up in the camera. Alright, that's enough of that. So, right, now what you're going to come to realize is that setting up points is a touch and go type of adjustment. It's not just a adjust it, maybe sometimes you get it slap on the first time and it's all they're all perfect. You've probably been doing it for a while, um, but a lot of times you're going to find that the adjustment is going to be adjust, check, adjust, check, adjust, check. That's why it's good to have a battery charger on your battery because you'll be starting to bike up a couple of times until you get it all dialed in how you want it. Now, like I said before, there's there's about one, two, three, four different adjustments. Okay, the main adjustment would be your plate adjustment, rotating the plates, which rotates both points at the exact same time. So now, since the advance marks are before the fire marks, that's how you know which way it's advancing. Now my my cam lobe is coming around like this. It's turning clockwise, okay? So if the cam is coming around like this while it's firing and opening the point, that point opens up, that point opens up, that point opens up, that, like, you know, as, as it's going around. If you think about it, this point plate can be adjusted with these slots once you loosen up these three holes and adjust both points at the same time as to where they contact on the lobe. I'm not changing the where the lobe is, I'm changing where these points react to the lobe, if that makes sense. So I can advance it towards and have the, let's say the lobe is right here and I turn all these points towards the lobe, that lobe's gonna come up and it's gonna tell these points to fire at a much sooner time than if they weren't. Uh, I really hope that makes sense. I'm trying to explain it in layman's terms. If I rotate this plate, here's the lobe, my finger being the lobe, Okay, if I rotate this plate clockwise, I'm now changing these points to be over towards the right, and this lobe will contact them at a much later point. Okay, retarding the time. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So that's one adjustment that you can do, and you can usually do that. You can really do it at any time, and it all depends on what your points look like when you set them up, um, or where they are. If they're both, if both one and f both one and four, and two and three were both reading a little bit advanced or a little bit retarded, you can actually take the point plate and rotate it in the degree that you want it to go, to bring them both at the same time up towards that fire mark, or back towards that fire mark. 
Does that make sense? That's what the plate for. It's like a main adjustment for both points at the same time. What you'll notice is that on two and three, you have this extra plate here. Okay, it's like a whole nother sub adjustment plate. And then you have another adjustment here on the actual point itself, which is where you mainly adjust the point gap at. Okay, so this secondary plate right here, this one that had, you notice that this side does not have it. So if you think about it, if I adjust this main plate, this main backing plate, I'm really adjusting one and four, and I can make another adjustment here on two and three to bring two and three where it needs to be. So what I like to do is set up one and four first, okay, with the main plate, however you want it to be, so that one and four is firing on the F, and then make my sub adjustment here with the second two and three to bring that one back into spec. Okay, so you adjust one and four first with the main plate if you need to, and then you can go back when you switch over to two and three after you set the point gap and all that stuff to two and three, and then make your secondary adjustment on two and three. So you don't have to rotate the whole plate just to get two and three back into spec, all right? But the first thing that you want to do is check the point gap, okay? That's what I do first. So what I'll do is I'll rotate this. Sometimes it's easier to show than it is to tell. I'll, so I'm, I'm gonna rotate this until one and four are open, which they are now. And right now it's probably at its furthest open point right here. But we're gonna keep on rotating. Okay, it's, it's, it's starting to close now. Now we're coming up on two and three. Sorry about the camera. Okay, two and three are open. They are closing now. Now, sub note for people who are trying to set the points for the first time. So when I, if you remember what I told you before, as soon as this breaks, it's, it breaks the gap. As soon as that cam comes around and contacts the point and breaks the gap, that's when it should fire. And like I said, it should be the smallest little sliver of a break in this little thing. So what I'll do, I'll turn off, all, I'll turn off the lights that I have around me, take my flashlight, point the flashlight behind the point, okay? I can't show this on the camera because the flashlight will, will, will just blind the camera out. But I point the flashlight behind it and, it's, and as I'm rotating around, I'm looking down and down through here and saying, okay, there's the advance marks. I'm coming up on the F. I should be pretty darn close to these points starting to open. So I'll put my flashlight right behind it and just look at it at a very level horizontal way until I get to that F. And I say, okay, are the points opening? And like I said, you're looking for the slightest little gap of light to be shined through there. That's if you're doing it without a static light bulb. That, that's why they had the static light bulb test, because it's doing the same thing, but just not hooking it all up. Blah, blah, blah. So on the F, you would imagine, okay, that should be where these, this gap is open. And it is. It's slightly, it's a hair open. Right, so. Like I said, once it gets to the F, this gap should just barely be starting to open up. But I'm gonna keep rotating it until the gap stops opening. Just right about there. Okay, and I'm gonna check that gap because now that lobe is on its furthest point of opening these points up. And it's a little loose to me. All right, so now that we've established that the where the points are as far as timing goes. Okay, we, we, we know that the one and four is actually spot on, but the gap is too much. Two and three, as we know, is too far ahead of the F mark. Okay, so we're gonna obviously make an adjustment here on this plate, but first what I wanna do is make sure that the gap, point gap, are correct and they are to spec because the more as you go through your your adjustments point gap will be affected less and less if that makes sense and but when you make the adjustments the point gap can also change that's why it's a back and forth type dance when it comes to adjusting them but as we know when we adjust this main plate let's say I adjust this one and four gap because I know it's too big the timing of which that fires is probably going to change, which means now I'm going to have to make an adjustment on this main plate to dial that 1 and 4 back in before I proceed to 2 and 3. So let's go ahead and adjust that 1 and 4 gap. Like I said before, what we're going to do is just turn this until the gap is at its, its, its furthest point. And that right there looks like it's its highest gap right there. So I'm going to put my feeler gauge in there. So I'm going to make my adjustment. And what I'm going to do is loosen up this. Phillips head screw here, which might not be that easy to do. You might have to do, do a little love tap on it. Okay, and once that Phillips head screw is loose, 
and then use a flathead screwdriver you'll see there's a little slot in here right here as well as two little little uh, machined points to actually use as leverage to move this point back and forth so what I do is I put my feeler gauge inside now I want to close that gap a little bit okay until my I feel a little bit of resistance that, that might have been too much actually right there feels good I'm gonna tighten it back up I'm just gonna snug that now when you go to tighten the bolt remember that that could actually because I'm turning it clockwise it could actually move that point set in a little bit so you gotta make sure that you double check and that feels good I'm not moving the points at all with my feeler gauge. You just want it to slide in there nice and easy with very little resistance. All right, so let's go ahead and check the point gap on two and three. And what I'm also gonna do is because we know where that two and three is at, it was way too ahead of the F mark. I'm gonna try to bring that back at the same time with other adjustments. And then I'm gonna recheck the timing and see where it's all at. Okay, so that lobe looks like it's got that point wide open. Let's see where it's at. That actually does not feel bad at all. If I had a 0.4 feeler gauge, it'd probably fit nice and snug. So I'm not even going to worry about it. That's definitely within spec. But, so when it comes to the 2 and 3, when I want to make the adjustment, right now it's firing too far ahead of the F mark. Okay, so what it's saying is here's my lobe, okay, on not necessarily exactly where it's at, but where this contacts the lobe, which is right here, it's a little arm that kind of rides up on that lobe as it goes around, it's firing ahead of the F which is too slow it's it's too late compared to where it needs to be so it with so what blah, blah, blah. so what I want to do is bring the F mark or bring it where it fires sooner which means that if this is my contact point for the point right here here's my lobe imagine this being a teardrop shaped lobe as I come around I want it to contact sooner on that lobe Okay, that will bring that timing mark back towards the F. I hope that makes sense. What I would do is I would loosen up this main plate back here. I would move this whole point plate up. Okay, that would allow it to kind of rotate more forward on this lobe. And you simply do that by the same way we do the points. It's got these two little marks here. I would just grab inside this slot and bring this whole point plate more forward. Okay? A side note, if you can grab you a set of Allen heads to replace all these, you'd be doing yourself a huge favor. Snug these back up, point gap didn't change. So now what I'll do is I'll run the bike with a timing light and see where everything is at. Okay, and we'll go and make adjustments from there. But first I'm gonna check one and four, and then I'm gonna go ahead and switch it over to two and three. You won't be able to hear me talk, but you get the idea. All right, so after adjusting that point gap and two and three, not much changed on the two and three. They're both still, this one's still a, ahead of the F mark, the fire mark. But on one and four, when I, because I changed the point gap on it, it now is acting just like two and three. It's contacting or it's making that spark show before the F, okay? And we want it on the F, not closer to the T. So it's firing too late. So now what I can do, since both of them are relatively in the same degree ahead of the F, I can rotate this whole plate now and bring both of them at the same time, hopefully back to where I want them. I had to replace this one because I, it was old. So with all these loose, I can now take this pl whole plate, I'm gonna rotate it forward and then tighten it back up. And once again, we will run the bike and see where it's at. All right, so I'm, I'm getting closer and closer to getting to where it needs to be. So one and fourth got really whacked out when I started to adjust this. Um, I think it's partially because of the point gap adjustment as well as when I made the adjustment here, it might have just been a little bit too much. So now this one's a little bit too advanced, but number four is spot on again where it should be. So I'm gonna bring this plate down Okay, in hopes of slowing down when this contacts that cam lobe coming around. All right, small adjustment. Right on the mother. 
flipping money. Another when something comes together. All right, so that did it right there. Bringing the plate down a little bit to slow that when it contacts the cam lobe, where it's perfect. One and four are in spec, two and three are in spec. I'm gonna do one last final check on the point gap, because like I said, sometimes it can change with the adjustments you make. Now, as you saw in the video, you might have heard the bike rev up, and I was checking one other thing, which is the advanced mechanism that goes on while you're revving the bike up, okay? So that one's perfect. So the two lines through here that we, that we were talking about being advanced marks, they're, they work centrifugally, okay? So as you raise the RPMs of the bike, crankshaft spinning faster, little weights fling out and move this set behind allowing the point system to advance, okay? So I checked that for one and four and two and three. Both of them are both advancing just where they need to be. Um, and when I bring it back down to idle, both are firing exactly where I want them to be. So what I'm gonna do is just snug this up one more time, get you a nice Phillips head screwdriver, and just make sure that everything is tight. And then what I want you to do is one more time, run the bike and make sure that it's all still in spec because as you tighten these around, you may notice that it may actually, you know, just tweak something just a little bit. Hopefully it doesn't. Um, I'm confident that it probably will not, but it's always just one good check to do. And that's pretty much it, guys. I mean, that's one way to do it. That's how I do it. Okay, and there's gonna be many other ways that you can, as far as, you know, point gap first, backing plate first, side plates, whatever you wanna do. That's just the way that I do it. I'm not saying it's the only way or anything like that. There's a lot of guys who swear by the static timing procedure, which is using a test light or some kind of light bulb with alligator clips to hook to certain points on, on the contact plate and ground in and out, making sure that when you rotate the crankshaft, as soon as those points open, the light will light up and then you can set it from there. But that's just not how I do it. I, I use a flashlight right behind the points and that can usually get you pretty close. If you're just swapping a brand new point plate on, I recommend looking to see where that point plate is at the original one, okay? Kind of maybe take a picture of it um, and just kind of see how and what, as far as the slots go, how far forward is it, this, that, and the other. That will get you somewhere in the ballpark. Regardless, what I always do is rotate the crankshaft until that F mark pops up for whichever cylinder I'm using, setting my little sliver of gap right there, going to the next one and carrying on, then firing it up for the first time. There will always be some adjustments to do after that. But with this bike specifically, that was just the procedures that I took to make sure that everything gets right back to where it needs to be, as it did. The, actually, the RPM of the bike raised up. Sounds to me like it wants to run better like that. So I'm excited to take it out for a test ride and see how she does. The main issue was a mid-range problem with this bike specifically, but I wanted to correct that problem first to see how far that would get us in the diagnostic phase. So thank you guys so much for tuning in and hanging out. As you guys know, I do have t-shirts for you to grab. Go to the website, Motorcycle MD support there. The shirts are awesome. I've gotten a lot of great feedback about them. Um, and that will be the last exclusive logo tee that I'll make in that type of pattern. So grab the first edition uh, and you won't regret it. They're super soft, super comfortable. Also, one more thing before you go. If you like to throw oil around your garage, get your hands dirty, mess with your cars, cook, clean, whatever you do with your hands that you may want some nitro gloves for, I have a really, really great company that has decided to sponsor Motorcycle MD. Glove Works. I've been a fan of these gloves for a long time. Um, the reason why I like them is because A, I can use them more than once, okay? Unless they tear, I can actually wash them off and reuse them, which is crucial to me when it comes to spending money, okay? A lot of the cheaper ones that have just basic nitro gloves, a really thin mill as far as the texture goes, they rip when you go to put them on. These also have a diamond grip, which is the first thing that I've seen on nitro gloves, and it actually, it seriously helps. When, you, when your hands get oily, when it comes to pulling things apart, whatever you're doing. I love them, I stand behind them, and I would never give you guys anything that I do not use myself. So, I wanna give you guys a 10% off coupon. Description below will let you know exactly where you can get that at. I have a link for you to buy them there. Again, 10% off your whole order. Also, check out their other stuff. They got tons of cool gloves. Last but not least, if you have not already, make sure you subscribe to my email mailing list. That's your direct connection to me. We can talk, we can chat. I'll give you promos, codes when the things come out when I think that will provide you value. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook. Also, Monday nights, 8.30 Eastern Standard Time, I do a YouTube Live Q&A where I go over some questions that I've gotten during the week that I feel like would help you out. So, multiple ways to get in touch with me. I will see you guys next time. This is Cody from Motorcycle MD, giving you guys quality tips and tricks for your custom builds or your daily rider. See you guys next time.